right on the top of the hour. So why don't we uh, bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? You have all board members unmuted, right? I don't think I am, am I? Yep, you're, you're there, Mike. Okay, I don't have a video yet, but I had a tough time logging on for some reason. Okay, I just brought the meeting to order and I'm asking, uh, is there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? So this would be a good time to move the uh, proclamation of, of the Juneteenth Freedom Day uh, forward to be yep. an addition. Yep. I'd like to add that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anyone else? Brian, were you going to add the beautification? Yeah. Ending? Okay. Yeah, we can add that. And do you have anything else, Brian? No, that's it for me. Okay. And no one else? Seeing that, Mike, Doug, Carl no. already spoke. Okay. First item, uh, are we ready to approve the meeting minutes of June 15th, 2020? What's the board's pleasure? I would move the minutes to be approved as written. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Rosemary, you got it. Uh, let me get you on mute, Rosemary. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, I haven't got much for tonight. Um, nobody, the grievance period has passed. For, for the BCA and nobody has grieved their assessment. So there's no need for a BCA meeting this year. Okay. Which I find is kind of unusual. Very That's unusual. Reappraisal. They'll wait till they get their tax bills in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Of course, then it's too late. Yes. Um, with the Secretary of State's um, sending out the postcards to all voters, we have seen a a sharp increase in absentee ballots for the primary. And the state is going to pay all the tabulator costs so we could use the tabulator at the primary. And they are also picking up all the postage costs. Hmm. Why are they picking up the tabulator costs? Related to COVID somehow? Yes. So they figure that um, the more ballots that go through the tabulator, less time for counting and exposure at night time. We, we'd probably be using that anyway, right? Not, not usually for the primary, but all the time for the general election. Okay, great. Typically, typically we have less than 100 votes for the primary, but I've already got close to that in absentee request. Mm -hmm. And I need the board members to come in and sign the loan documents for the tractor tomorrow if possible. Okay. What time will you be there, Rosemary? 7.30. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll meet you there, Colin. <laughs> Bring coffee. So if we've got a minute, uh, Beth has a question from the chat for Rosemary. Are you ready for questions, Rosemary? Sure. Okay. Uh, she asks, uh, doesn't the tax bill usually arrive before the grievance deadline? No, it's always afterwards. Thank you. Uh, would it be just as easy to have all board members sign the orders if the, everyone needs to come in and sign the loan agreement? You know, typically, We've been uh, authorizing the chair to sign for on behalf of the board, but if everyone's got to go in anyhow, we might as well all go in and sign the orders as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Rosemary, do you know when we're going to be ready to set the tax rate? 
I'm hoping at your next meeting, but I'm not positive on that yet. Because you're still waiting for the take, uh, state, right? State, yeah. Um, they've said uh, tax rates are going to be released the 15th of June of July. But okay. I don't. I won't. I'll see it. I'll believe it when I see it. And that means our earliest payment will be the end of August. The well then. Week. The state won't have all the um, homestead declaration forms done until August 1st, because people have until July 15th to file their homestead declaration forms. Okay. And if we send it out early, earlier, that we're just, we're just gonna be having more revised tax bills. Okay. In the long run. So it's a future discussion then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You got anything else? Nope. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? If not, thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. Uh, Brian, you might as well get into your report. Okay. So the first is an update on the skate park. Um, you know, I, I'd say that this really started uh, with a when we learned that a, an individual had found uh, drugs at the skate park and I later learned that it was not a small amount of drugs, that it, it turned out to be a rather large amount. Uh, you know, they were turned into the police, uh, but since then we've kind of stepped up our activity monitoring the, the, the park uh, with volunteers and with cooperation from the sheriff's department that has we've had some other kind of curious incidents um you know and we've been kind of keeping an eye out for kind of anything that's going on there but it, it's been uh yeah it's been concerning and, and this seemed like a good opportunity to allow uh folks to kind of bring everybody up to speed and allow for questions um Oh, Casey, I'm going to unmute you and see if there's anything that you'd like to add about what's going on with our monitoring there. Uh, okay, go ahead, Casey. Uh, yes, a um, lot of good things, actually. Uh, first, well, on as backup, uh, Ken Harvey's office reports that there's been more, they've had much more trouble in their Johnson Park, you know, next to us uh, than they've ever had, quote unquote. Uh, and this sort of seems to be generally symptomatic of COVID and uh, for a variety of factors as well. Uh, I, we know there's more drug use, there's more drinking, that's everywhere. So there's a, there is a spillover effect. Um, and it, actually when the, when the skate park area was closed, there was a lot of vandalism, if you'll, you'll remember that too but that was you know bush league compared to a lot of heroin um anyway since the so that's the background that's the not fun part um and we've been very candid publicly on front porch or whatever about what's going on so um we reached out actually first to nat um and he's he's talked with sheriff's department We've since formed a connection with um, uh, Sergeant uh, Watson, who we have worked with before. He's willing to be sort of our regular liaison uh, with the park. He is talking to Roger about either today or tomorrow about um, whether the, the, the sheriffs, in fact, will even might even just donate or loan some a, a game camera or two for us to use which we would put in and if they don't we're going to proceed with probably getting one um but the so you know we're we're working on that um uh then the but the other part is that again kudos to nat at the end of our meeting that he's stayed with us on last week he said remember you know um 
there's a lot of good to the skate park and it's really a good resource and I hate to see only the negative <laughs> emphasis. I think I'm saying that, saying pretty much what you said that. And I, I thought about it and I said, yeah, right. Uh, so yes, this, there's a lot to be proud of in the park. And so um, I put on uh, front porch already a, you know, park pride kind of starting a discussion um, saying we're going to update our some picture pictures on our Facebook and Instagram um, showing positive stuff so I'd say this this has not been fun um, and the, the drug activity is very scary uh, but I think we're taking the steps we need to take Thank you, Casey. Does anybody have any questions for Casey while we have her up, up on screen? Sorry, Casey, could you just name what the steps are again? Well, a regular, a regular communication person, regular connection via one person at the, um, with the Sheriff's Department, number one, uh, being candid publicly always um, about what's going on uh, you know as uh, the minute that that uh, drug report was out in the paper we said something you know we sort of quoted the, the little blurb and spoke about it on front porch um, we've asked we've been candid also about um, asking people to if they see something that seems wrong call the sheriffs email us get in touch we need eyes you know, we need eyes and information. We want to know if something doesn't feel right, doesn't look right. Um, we're keeping an eye on traffic, uh, particularly any attempt, you know, want to, want to keep an eye on attempted night traffic. Um, and, you know, and there's been some response to that with people getting in touch with me and telling me what they've seen. Um, unfortunately, all that stuff is secondhand. It's not anything the police can act on, but you know, it, it, it helps. Um, and then thirdly, uh, just coming at it from a 360 and wanting to say, hey, you know, this is also a terrific place and there's a lot of good on it and good about it. And um, let's not forget that. You're, a couple other things that I can think that you've done, Casey, um, you've really cultivated some relationships with regular users that yes. are productive, like productive, um, pause, what do you call them, ambassadors? Um, to well, we, have, we have one. We have one. Okay. It's not as close a connection as I want, but I guess I actually, I think our more, most regular connection is a, a, high, a, a teenager who's a very avid skater. Yeah. and his friends and talking with people in the park and yes that's that's really strong um yeah okay. i i sent uh sue lovering actually an email from ashton the, the teenager who um wrote that he, he we're in touch by email frequently and he's actually going to help me with pictures getting pictures and stuff for our facebook account and whatever um, but he, he wrote me, oh, Casey, uh, I was at the park and noticed that there was a tree limb broken, was hanging down, was going to, you know, could have hurt someone. I pulled it down. I put it behind the woodshed. I took care of it. And otherwise, the park is looking good. He always tells me if, any, you know, he tells me if something's wrong or needs fixing. And so, yeah, more communication. And you've, you've, um, um, no trespassed at least one person who's a really bad destructive influence down there. Three. 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 Well, we're trying. We're in. It's in the works. Uh, it's right. not as simple as getting it placed with the police. It has to be successfully served. Blah 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 blah. So I, when I learned that this was a you know not an instant in yeah. out process, um, I actually found addresses myself and wrote to those boys uh, myself uh, at the best addresses I had for them so that they would get the notices independent of whenever the they got delivered by the police. Yeah. 
So it's a process, but you've you, yeah. you're, you're working hard on that. So yep. Yeah. I think Casey's done a really nice job with this. It's work. Yeah. Thank you, Casey. I mean, I, I yeah, I think um, the more we can get community members involved in a you know in sort of reclaiming the park as this is our space this is our safe space you know um is is super important right and right. Ver, you know obviously if if the police absolutely need to be involved they need to be involved but rather than that being sort of the first go-to you know like just really trying to um try to uh, yeah, empower each other to, to take back our park, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Were you, so uh, you looking for anything from us tonight, Casey, or was this just, uh, information? Uh, no, no, you know, um, Nat told us it was on the agenda and obviously we wanted to be here to speak. I, I, obviously we've talked about it in our, in our committee, yep. you know, there's been a, a lot of emails and so forth. Um, it, we know that it's really critical to keep the place looking really clean, keep the signs sharp, uh, that sort of thing as well. And, and that's where actually, um, you know, some work, some work with Lamoille Healthy Valley on some prevention type signage is in the works as well, uh, drug prevention, mm -hmm. because not in a yeah, yeah, don't do this, but just hey, ride free, ride free of drugs, tobacco, tobacco and alcohol. You know, positive, some positive messages. Yeah, good. Well, certainly, thank you for all your hard work that you and and your team does down there. I and think it is appreciated these. by ninety five percent of the people, or ninety nine percent of the people. <laughs> you always get the bad apples, but. Yeah, right. So, okay. Anybody got any further thank questions? You. For, you know, thank you, Casey. Thank for you. Casey, uh, I do have some comments uh, and questions, not specifically for Casey, but I think for kind of all of us. Uh, Jessica, I think I had you up first. Okay, go ahead, Jess. Hi. Um, I just, you know, as a as a resident and also having you know experience with parks as well as wearing a prevention hat you know a lot of these issues are community level issues and you know we as a community need to state like kind of what we want for our parks and our kids um and i could think that most of us would agree that we want safe you know safe parks um but that involves work and it involves you know not just a, a quick work but just kind of an ongoing you know neighborhood watches um you know, see something, say something campaigns, and you know it. It it takes focus and time, and you know I think that that's something that you know we need to be aware of, and it, it needs to be a team effort. You know that we do have our, our law enforcement partners, and they certainly play a role in this, um, as well as you know um, our rec committee, our skate park committee, um, but also just concerned citizens. And so they're. You know, I know that Casey's done a good job getting the, the word out and um, just, you know, Healthy Lamoille Valley has um, Allison's on the call and, you know, her her main role is policy and community outreach. So if, if there's opportunity to form a work group, she could help facilitate that process. Um, we really leave it to the towns and we're, we're not driving our own agenda, but she has the skills and resources to facilitate a greater conversation. Um, if that's something that people want to pursue. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, Cal had asked to speak also. Okay, go ahead, Cal. Okay, good. I'm muted. Yes. Um, I just, I, I just quickly, I just want to echo um, what some of the, some folks already said a little bit is, um, that I think the you know the notion of being community uh, I forget the phrase you used Jessica but um, just having more of a normative culture at the skate park as opposed to criminalizing things I think is an important lens to keep on this um, just to echo and I think also that um, skate parks um, are an easy place to 
uh, demonize, I guess, um, as far as this stuff. I, I would like to know more, you know, and I guess I can find out about um, the drugs that were found um, and just have real transparency around that, which I, you know, because uh, I consider the skate park a great resource, uh, you know, where I work, the kids use it all the time. And um, I just want to encourage, you know, especially after experiencing and organizing Tuesday Night Live for 14 years, that there was lots of instances uh, that were taken care of by myself and others um, on a very community level. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that folks encourage that and stay involved in it um, and that we make sure that um, it, there's more of a normative culture. Most skaters I know, I'm not a skater, but uh, are pretty decent folks and uh, do do have a, 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 a real um, a respect for, for the skate park. And I think Casey would probably echo that, but um, just to be cautious and make sure that we keep uh, that lens on it. So thank you. Thank you. And Allison, I believe you had asked to speak also. Okay, Allison, go ahead. Hi everyone, nice to see you two months, uh, two meetings direct back to back. Uh, I am really impressed, Casey. We've we've spoken plenty. I've seen you at the park with my kids, and um, you know all the work that's going on and that and what's happening and in, in motion. And I don't want to repeat what folks have said. Obviously, Jessica already mentioned you know how we can support, but I just want to make two points that I haven't heard yet. Um, so one is people come from out of town, um, you know, and, and so people like, oh, if I live in Morristown, it's out of town from Johnson. But uh, when I'm there, I often see people who are not necessarily Johnson residents and who, you know, don't necessarily know what's happening in the park or maybe they do. But I think that, um, you know, if not already, if there is a visible place where, you know, how people can can act on what Casey's mentioning, like that the, the they don't see it in your front porch forum, but like they're there and, you know, in a pause, as you said, Casey, like we've talked about, like the positive way of saying, you know, keep our park healthy and safe and, you know, for all, um, you know, see something, say something and some information or whatever way is that that can be even more public or putting out press release or, you know, other ways that folks beyond your town, because people, obviously you want people to come to Johnson and keep coming and not to be turned away in this case park is an incredible resource i have to say i i am there a lot um as just uh you know as a as a user for my family and my kids and it, it's wonderful how it's developed so just to think about you know how we can help support the signage or you know as in as you know um the old mill um park signage is uh, coming to you and you know any way that we can help Casey, you know, please reach out, you know, to to raise that uh, level of that positive messaging out in ways that you think that we can. The other part is again to reiterate about the visioning and the strategic thinking um, overall and consistent messaging across the town. It's hard, I think, when folks might see mixed messaging. One park is is has these rules. One park has those rules. You know, and I think a community conversation or convening a group could support um, this. Uh, you know, consistent messaging as. Uh, Johnson moves forward and again that's from a facilitator um, perspective um, and also looking at the data and the evidence base based um, strategies so you know we'd help support you in any way that you're looking for um, resources and those are the two main parts that I think weren't um, mentioned thus far Jessica I don't know if you want to add to it but that's what I saw okay uh, can I add one more thing I, I forgot to mention too, you said positive messaging. Um, and I had said, we, we want to definitely <laughs> update our Instagram and Facebook and so forth with good stuff. Uh, and we, but we also have display space down at the park. And one idea was to have, you know, a pride wall, a, pr a pride place with s some of those same kind of photos and showing involvement kids kids and or families pictures blurbs whatnot you know have it have it right there at the park for visitors like you said yeah to see that's great and um yes 
I was also going to just say that I know that typically River Arts also has a program at the park. I know COVID-19 related, they're keeping it at River Arts and not at the this skate year, park yeah. this year, unfortunately. But, you know, there are a lot of stakeholders um, for the park from out of town and or out of Johnson. I mean, we're not, we're very close. We're miles, just miles away. But, uh, you know, but I think that however, even on like, um, I'm here with different hats, just like Jessica is, but uh, however I can support, um, you know, support the efforts, uh, please let me know personally as well. Okay, great, thank you. So how are we doing, Brian? We got anybody else? Uh, looks like Mike has a comment. Uh, this is to uh, Cal Stanton. Uh, Cal, you still there? Uh, he's on mute, but yeah, it looks were, like he's here. Were you looking for the type of drugs and quantity? Is that what your question was? Um, I, just more about the whole, what's, what's been, what's the follow up then on it? I, I could tell you in two words, 50 packets of heroin. It is, it is an active case at the mm -hmm. police, uh, at the sheriff's department. Um, it is assigned to the drug detective, whatever, whatever, uh, that's not the right role or title, but whatever. Um, and, uh, it, but they said, you know, these to build an actual case that will end up successfully in court is a long and mm, painstaking road. Um, but it's still it's on their positive. It's on their their active case list. Casey, so. you told me um, you you found out what what the approximate value of that. Well, my daughter in Portland, Oregon says that's $500 worth, but the sheriff, one of the sheriff's people said, actually here it's more like a thousand because there's really no competition and people go like to Springfield, Mass or New York City and buy it at that price, bring it back here and double the price. So more money value. Just a general, yeah, it just gives us a general idea of what Right. That was because 50 bags means nothing to me. Yeah, it's not trivial. Okay. But again, I think, oh, sorry, I'm just going to follow up, Casey. So when you say, you know, this, this is, this is um, difficult for the police department to, to deal with and get into court. So even more reason why we need to, as a community. Yes, that's correct. Not have the, you know, rely on police and you know like i think we need to we really need to think outside the box here <laughs> which it sounds like you are doing so i'm just yeah yeah okay. uh, i think casey and lisa have handled this really well and that this is another step on the process of raising public awareness and increasing the visibility of problems like this that like Casey had said earlier, that we want to be transparent about it and we want people to participate in the way of, you know, who, uh, I think Jessica had said, it, you know, if you see something, say something. Let us know uh, what, what you see going on, uh, that we won't, you know, uh, we're working at every avenue we have. Um, and we, we do need the whole community's help on, on problems like this. This is a, a yeah. serious ongoing concern. Um, and and, I, and I'll underline quickly that this, Lisa is a verb here. <laughs> it's not gonna happen well without her because she has skills and access that I'll just never have on social media. So, and, we, and that's, that's a tool that we've gotta use well. And, that's she's going to help with that okay thank okay. you casey and all for speaking to this i guess we probably should go on to the next item now so uh this next one is a uh project that a lot of our residents have been working on with some assistance uh from lcpc and across the state uh about moving ahead with forming a communication okay. union district. Um, so this was something that we've been really interested in 
developing. This was a recommendation out of our broadband committee uh, and the enabling legislation that allows us to form a CUD uh, was just recently passed. Uh, hopefully we recall that the governor signed it at a community meeting for Johnson. Um, the next steps are uh, if we want to move forward, we will uh, adopt a resolution about the formation of a uh, the Lamoille Fibernet Communications Union District. This will also be taken up by um, a number of other towns and that will go on to form that uh, district. We will then be using that to try and access uh, some of the funds that are coming along for broadband deployment and rolling out uh, broadband for the kind of last mile in communities like Johnson. Um, I know we've got Leah and Charles both on the call who are both more familiar with this than I am. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and turn it over to Leah first. All right, Leah, there you go. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Thank yes. you, Leah. Okay. Um, I don't really need to speak to this at this point. We've had numerous discussions uh, with the board, um, but I am here to answer questions if there are questions. So our action tonight, if the board so desires, is to adopt this resolution and to appoint a representative with some alternates. Correct. Okay. Perhaps one thing that I would say is that Hyde Park acted on the same resolution last Monday. And tonight is a, as I said at, here at home, it's a big night for the CUD because along with Johnson Morristown, as well as Waterville, are having the same discussions this evening. And I believe, I understand that this is under a, uh, only while the state of emergency is in effect that the state's declared. And after that, this would expire, This the authority for the select board to adopt this. That's correct. Okay. You better get right on it, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I need a motion. You oh. have it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Mike has made a motion to adopt the resolution. I, can, I guess we can make two motions. One to whether the board wants to adopt the resolution, and then the second one we would uh, uh, designate who the representatives would be. You want to do two? Yeah. So okay, do, we just, have, yeah. do we have a second for Mike's motion? Second. Motion and second. Now we can open it up for discussion. I think procedurally, uh, we want the, the resolution includes the representative. So I think during discussion, we want to decide on the representative. Okay. If we can make Charles that is shaking his head. He doesn't think I have this right. Hold on, Charles. Okay, go it's ahead. It's not correct. <clears throat> you can approve the resolution and, and have a separate resolution on, on delegates. You do not need to have delegates as of tonight. Um, but you would have to have them by the time the board would meet with Hyde Park, Waterville, Cambridge, whoever else adopts it. But as of tonight, <clears throat> you don't have to. Now, there's a couple of caveats here. This, you only have this power during the state of emergency, which is scheduled to expire on July 15th, but in all probability will be expended, extended beyond that date. I would suggest notwithstanding that, that you go ahead and act on this tonight. It would, it would, be, it would behoove you to have at least interim delegates or temporary delegates or whatever again tonight so that when the form, formative meeting is held, we, we, we would be represented. Wise words, Charlie. Any other discussion? Well, one other point. 
Uh, it was the unanimous recommendation of your five to the home committee to join a CUD. So. Thank you. Is the board prepared to vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor, seeing five saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the ayes carry. Do we have any nominations for representatives or interim? or alternates. Was Doug or Charlie interested? No. No. Um, I believe um, Charlotte um, Reber, Reber uh, would be interested. I don't know if Brian, you had any direct conversation with her today? I did. Charlotte, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Uh, Charlotte, I've got you unmuted, but I'm still not hearing you. How about now? Yes. That works. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, I'd be interested in serving as uh, either the representative or the alternate for Johnson. Perfect. Good she'd choice. Be, she'd be a great rep for us. Um, do, we, do we want to also designate any alternates? Um, I had reached out, I see Margo on, I'd reached out to Paul Warden, his name came up in discussion, uh, and I left a message for Paul, but I'm <laughs> wondering if Margo might have uh, some insight. So Margo, I'm going to unmute you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this has not been discussed at Shea Warden, yeah. but uh, so I have, I have nothing to add. Okay. Um, so Paul's he, like right outside. Should I, should I go grab him and put him yeah, on the spot? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Paul, please. Well, unless he says no. <laughs> yeah. Then you'll take it. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Paul. Do we I know of anyone else who's expressed interest? Uh, we had had some conversations with Doug about this. Uh, he might be willing to serve. It's, uh, I love to see the volunteers for this. Um, you know, I've been interested in, as you know, in pushing uh, broadband to, as Charlie says, the last mile. Um, so I would be willing to serve in a capacity there. Oh, oh great. Plus, Doug's on the hook for some contribution. Monetary? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Offered to pay for the name registration. Oh, cool. You better get him on that quick before he changed his mind. Did we ever Doug, get Paul? Doug, yeah. Um, well, Doug, did you just step up to the plate? Um, not, I haven't heard from Paul. I'm waiting to bargain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I, I Paul did. hasn't had an opportunity to read the email, so it sounds like you can make a uh, measured decision with information, so. So you had a thumbs up then, Margo. A thumb, thumbs up for Doug. Oh, for Doug. Oh, I thought it was for Paul. Like more? Initially it was. Hey, everybody. Here he is. Hey, Paul. So what's going, what am I being drafted for here? What's going on? <laughs> so Margo indicated you'd be a perfect candidate to uh, the alternate on this uh, uh, CUD committee. Margo knows me better than that, so I know that's not true. That's <laughs> true. But Charlotte is like the head. Char Charlotte, Charlotte will be the representative, right. but we got we're the just eighteen. A couple of alternates. So I'm sorry, I haven't read whatever email you're referring to, so I really don't even know what we're talking about. Uh, I think it left as a voicemail on your phone this afternoon. Sounds like a yes to me. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he just doesn't know it yet. Let's get that. We don't need to take up. Okay, let me read it. I'll get. I'll, I'll get back to Charlotte. Or who should I respond to? Uh, go ahead and get back to me, and I'll coordinate. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Paul. So, um, I, I would. I would say that um, it is important that you have good people representing the town. Um, it's always better to have redundancy in appointments, but if for tonight you have one 
uh, that's good. And then you can revisit the issue in two weeks if that felt more comfortable. Um, I am hoping, it's not determined yet, but I'm hoping to put together an organizational meeting of the CUD next week. So if the one representative can attend and, and be a part of that, that would be great. Um, I would encourage you not to drop the issue and seek for those alternates and, and have, have good and solid appointments. But the one is the minimum. But we could also have two alternates, right? That's, that's how it's in the resolution. You are nominating a primary representative and two alternates, up to two alternates. Would the board be comfortable, comfortable uh, appointing a slate of Charlotte is the representative, alternate Doug and alternate Paul with Paul's uh, willingness? Yes. Are you so moving? Yes. Do we have a second? Um, yeah, I'd be enthusiastic about that. I just want to make sure Paul's into it. Well, he covered it. He covered it. Uh, uh, and I, I, I don't want to dissuade you from that, but on the resolution, you clearly have to indicate the name of the alternate, and you really <laughs> cannot put in, you know, pending his interest. Okay. It's a, it's a yes or no type of thing. So if he's not ready, I would not put his name forth okay. today. Okay. So then, would you? Charlie, are you not up for it? No, I'm not. Would, would Can we like table it a bit later? It sounds like. Um, Paul's going to get back to us in a few minutes. So if we bring this up later, can we do that? We could. Okay. We'll move it to the next. We'll, uh, we'll go out of order, Mr. Chairman. As soon as Paul comes back, we'll, we'll make that call. Okay. Either with or without him. Uh, Shane, you had your hand up. Um, no? Okay. So I'm confused. Did you appoint representatives or not? No, not yet. We're going to wait until Paul gets back to us. He's reviewing the uh, <laughs> the thing he's volunteering for. We've already adopted the resolution. We'll come back to it as soon as Paul indicates whether he's interested in serving or not. So then, does that put the Johnson Committee out of business? No. Why not? Our broadband committee? Oh, oh, oh that committee. Oh, I thought you were talking yeah. about the other yeah. thing. Excuse me. This puts the, the Johnson Broadband Committee out of business, right? Uh, Can you make a motion? We got the so. same deer in the headlight look I have, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't see what role you would have unless Leah can correct me there. I don't see a role for us anymore either. Your decision. I know that the town of Hyde Park uh, that appointed three members uh, to the CUD, um, the last I knew they were interested in keeping the local committee, uh, maybe putting it on hold. Um, I, I would not decide that tonight. Uh, maybe you can think about it and get the committee's input into this as well. Okay. So hang on, Charlie. You might still have reason for being. Oh, I have that anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you ready, Brian? The review? Before we move on from this, I think I might offer, um, I think we might be better ahead to appoint, or to, I would recommend appointing Charlotte and Doug now. And then if, Paul is willing to come back to that, just so we've filled at least two of the positions, or failing that, at least appoint Charlotte so that we've got our representative appointed for the organizational meeting that Leah wants to have. If Doug or Paul is interested, they can sit in on that meeting, and as long as we've got our voting representative appointed, they can sit in as alternates or they can just sit in as observers, uh, we're safe either way. So what's the board's pleasure? You just want to you want to have a motion right now, appoint Charlotte and put Doug as an alternate? And we'll come back to Paul if 
we can do that. It doesn't really make any difference because we're going to accomplish one thing or the other before the end of this meeting anyway. But I, I guess if the town administrator would feel more comfortable doing it this way, then I guess I would see no problem doing that. I think your motion's still on the floor, so would that be a friendly amendment? Yes, and just remove Paul. Yeah. And who had the second? I seconded the CUD. Okay. But I thought, okay. I thought we voted well, on that. Well, we did vote on the CUD, but we never voted on the uh, slate of the candidates or the appointments. Okay. So Mike made a motion. I've seconded it with the two. Okay. And that's a friendly amendment for you as well? Yes. Okay. Is there any more discussion? I'll receive myself from that vote. And so noted, I hope, Donna. Doug has recused himself. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. And if you can also have that ready for my signature tomorrow, the, the chair has to sign. Everybody, no, this is, yeah, this is uh, board chair. Okay. Uh, building ordinance. All right. Next up is uh, the most recent draft of uh, the building permit ordinance. So we, I've made a few changes since our last meeting. I've cleaned up a lot of the language and the artifacts that were left from different versions um, and tried to try to tighten it up as much as I can. Um, in particular, here I can share my screen so that other folks can follow along. All right, in particular changes that we made uh, were in section 4A. Um, let's see, we uh, changed the shall not language uh, to soften it up a little bit to try and make it a little more clear that this cannot be used to uh, approve or deny a construction project, that, that this is informational only. So we tried to soften that language a little bit in 4A. And under enforcement, we added a part E uh, that says that no penalty or injunction except those described here is permitted for noncompliance. Uh, in particular, thinking injunctions that again, you that this cannot be used to prevent construction. This is not a uh, not a review. It's, it's purely informational. Uh, so those are the major changes since the last version you've seen. Are there any questions uh, that we want to go over for this? This opening up board members first. Yeah. Is there any board members? I have some revisions that I would suggest again. Um, basically, it's the same same um, roadmap I was on last time on, on section seven enforcement. So uh, I had suggested uh, we toll the uh, the uh, enforcement for six months and that suggested that it'd be like 12 months before purposes of publication and because this is a very unusual um, it's, it's not in people's normal experience I would go in 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 section three definitions I D informational permit I would say informational permit means a written statement issued by the select board of the town or the permit officer all of that's a quote of what exists, establishing that the town has received the notice required under this ordinance. Now, I basically would like to take out that we're issuing a permit that we're going to check back up on in a year. Uh, so they apply, we give them that, we give them the, uh, we've gotten the notice that that's what we want, and then we, uh, and the permit is just an informational permit. It's just 
It's just communicating them that they have made, they have provided us with the information. And on uh, permit section six, the permit amendment, um, section E on it, once the application is received, the select board of the town of Johnson, the permit officer shall review the project and issue the informational permit, period. You know, crossing out F and G. You know, I basically don't want to have this to be a, uh, well, I guess along the same line in the heading of this is Town of Johnson Building Permit Ordinance. I would call it an informational permit and not have a building in strike building. I mean, that's what its purpose is. Right, right, right. I agree with that, Doug, except will the average person out on the street understand what a Town of Johnson informational permit is? They would understand what building permit is. No, well, I, don't, I don't think they'll understand this is a building permit. A building permit is a ability to, you know, it's a zoning thing. We want to move away from zoning. The people who are opposing this are saying this is zoning. This is not zoning. This is you give us, you tell us you're going to do it, you can do it. I think the problem is maybe permit, maybe not so much the building, but the permit. I'm rewording that. Because to me, permit means, you know, something very, yeah, serious that will get checked back on, you know. Um, I think it's a, it's, that can be a bit of a loaded term. Do you have Mr. a suggestion? Chairman. Maybe, I don't know, just form something a little more. Um, notification, building notif notification. Um. Does anybody have a better suggestion for that word? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead, Mike. Let's just forget the whole thing. We got to do something. We got to help out the assessors. We know that. And unless, unless you have something else, other way of doing it. Go ahead, Nat. Um, I don't. I don't have a suggestions on the specific verbiage, but um, all along we've been pushing for. Well, I've been pushing for. I think other people have been pushing for making this as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and this form, whatever we're going to call it, is now one page long. Um, it's actually significantly less than a page long. It's just got a lot of extra places to write. Um, there's contact information, and then there are five questions. Three of them are yes and no questions. So you fill out three yes or no questions and two very short questions. Um, and submit them to the town and it's, it, there's no way for you to be de not denied. So this is incredibly simple. Um, there's, there's no denying people what it, um, the, the right to do what they want on their land to build whatever the heck you want. Um, and it, it accomplishes the two goals that we initially set out for, um, which was um, more tax equity fairer assessments and um, safety of our assessor so that she has a name and address of a person that she can contact before she shows up on someone's door yard. So um, I think this is really good. I do think um, Doug suggested we get rid of um, under six, that we get rid of F and G. I, 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 my thought was just on G instead of saying that the project may be granted an extension of another year, the project will be granted an extension of it another year. Um, I understand that we don't want this just to be an open-ended thing that you fill out once and then 20 years, for the next 20 years, you get to build anything. Um, so those are my thoughts on it. So if I can offer a comment on that and to Doug's point, um, this, that, that that part is kind of F and G uh, and that we're doing a notification and then a permit is 
it does make it easier to to administer. Uh, it's not impossible to do it another way. Uh, we can simplify it, like Doug is suggesting. Suggesting, but um, this would make it easier to administer because we would have a clear distinction between things that were open that we'd received notification for, but hadn't been complete. So it's in a state where it will affect their property taxes, but it hasn't been completed, so it doesn't yet affect, affect their property taxes. So it's in a state in our files that that's easy to track. And then we issue the permit, what we're currently calling the permit afterwards, uh, because we've closed it out. We know that they've completed the project and the assessment has been changed. And so this is a, a closed and recorded project. Um, if we're doing it that way, having them, the permits or the, the notice to proceed expire is very helpful for us. Um, in, because that, will, that way we just check in with them whether they've completed the project or not. Uh, you know, that we will grant it to them, uh, indefinite extensions, as many as they want, uh, but that that helps us stay on top of uh, projects that are in that in-between stage of, we're notified, but the assessment hasn't changed yet. Well, I'm not sure if, if we uh, really care about a lot of that because the only intent or purpose of this was so that we had something to notify the assessors that something was being done, a building was being built, and it was just a notification for the assessors. Once we notify the, the assessors, then it's up to them to go assess the property and they'll be dealing with the taxpayer. Our role is really minimal in this. It, it is minimal. Um... But th this, I think that would be helpful. It's not the only way to go about it, but I think that would be helpful administratively from the assessor's position and from my position about having a clear distinction between projects that are in progress versus projects that are complete. I don't understand how that will work because there is nothing that people will have to, to if you if you're less than a year, you don't have to notify them where you are. The assessors really are going to be looking and should be looking. Yes. I, I don't, I don't, you know, so I, I, it's beyond the scope of what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, I, I think that this is useful for me, but this is not uh, necessary. I don't think it's necessary. So if you feel that this is beyond where you're comfortable going, um, I'm fine with changing it. Yeah, I think the whole intent is to make it very, very simple. Um, just notification, that's all we care about. And we pass that on to the assessors so they know that a property is having something built. That's my take. I'm hearing that backed up from Nat. Uh, Eric, sounds like you, that's how you would like to, it to go to? Yep, yeah, I would. Okay, so I'm going to return with another version uh, that changes, uh, the, that moves away from um, having a staged process. So it's just gonna be Somebody provides us notification, and then that's they they let us know they're going to build something, and then that that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I can Thank scan you. and I can scan and send my notes. You know what I also to you if that if and you can review that in light of what you think was said. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and I think that there's some desire to get rid of the word permit and move around um, notification. Uh, you know, Diana, uh, Diana Osborne has a couple suggestions about notification of building, notification of change to assessment, something like that. Um, 
potential change to assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Permit permits appear in three places. The, the, I mean, well, the heading and then the appendix A and B. Yeah, I, I think that we can change the, the language a little bit pretty easily. So words with that. So one other thing I kind of want to throw out, and I, I don't really know how I feel about this, but I wanted to run it by the board. Um, so I think Doug or somebody mentioned earlier, there's con concern that people are going to understand what this is and what the int intent of it and, and how it's going to work. And I'm wondering if we would benefit instead of adopting this on our own this summer to um, put it before the voters at town meeting, that way we can publish the ordinance and a sample permit in the, the town report. We can educate people about what it is and what the intent is, um, and they can have a, a, a fuller understanding of it. Um, because right now there is like that sort of undercurrent of, well, this is zoning and this is about control. And my concern is that people really understand that this is, <laughs> this is notification, not permit. It's five questions, three are yes or no, you know. Question for Nat, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, Nat, so you're basically saying that the vote, the voters should decide on this at town meeting next year. I'm throwing it out there. I'm throwing it out there. I could agree to that. Let the voters decide next year at town meeting day. Um, well, that would be a non-binding. Right. Well, we, we go through a lot of non-binding stuff, and you know, depending on the uh, the will of the people, if it's two to one in favor or two to one in, against, we would be stupid to go against the people of the town. So it may be non-binding uh, in theory, but it behooves the board to certainly do the will of the people. No, I mean, we could put it before the voters and basically we would gauge their uh, comfort level and then we would have to take the vote very similar to uh, what was it? Something a while ago we had to do. I don't remember. Form-based code. Yeah, form-based code. It'd be the same format. We would same to, deal. Yeah, I could agree with that 100 percent. That let's move it to next year to town meeting day. But, you know, I, and my intent is not. I support this really fully. I want to. I'd love to adopt it right now. My my concern is that we're going to adopt it. It's going to get petitioned to be overridden, and then it goes to an Australian ballot vote. And it doesn't get fully, we don't really have our, our chance before the voters to explain. Exactly. What it is. Much better and cleaner to do it at town meeting. Now, just understand after we adopt it, if the voters approved it at town meeting day and then a follow on meeting, we had officially adopt it, the voters could again have a petition and, and have an Australian ballot. Vote. I understand that, but still they have okay. a, a chance to say their piece at town meeting yeah. day. Okay. I just want to make sure you, you understood that. We, oh, I understand 100%, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Believe it, I do. I don't think we should wait. I think we should adopt this with, you know, we should address it. Brian should bring it back. We should uh, vote it up or down. Um, and uh, I think what we should put in it is, a, as I indicated, was a tolling of the statute, which, uh, which would put us beyond to like a year, which would put us beyond town meeting. And so we could publicize it there. And you know, that, that's comments that uh, you know, I, I think that Eric made last time and Nat was pushing, Nat had actually suggested a one year extension when I suggested six months. Yeah, but once we get that, if, if we were to get a petition back saying that, that to override this with a vote, isn't there a certain number of days with when which yes. we have to hold that vote? So that would have to be voted on this summer, this fall, provided that petition drive happened and I have confidence in, in Charles that he's going to be able to do that. Um, Mr. So Chairman. It gets, it gets struck down even before it gets to town meeting day. Go ahead, Mike. Well, and the deal is uh, Nat is right and I'll expound upon that a little more. Uh, we don't know uh, how long this COVID stuff is going to last and if it's, if there's a petition that's been gathered uh, and there's, there's a vote taken, and let's say by chance it has to be a mail-in vote or something like that. And that's, a, that's a considerable expense 
to the town uh, to do that. And I think that, especially in this time of tight budgets, that we ought to just wait till town meeting day, uh, decide it there. It's not really that far away when you get right down to it. And it's so much cleaner, and it gives everybody in the town that feels one way or another their forum to speak. Okay, I'm hearing, although we want to still have this uh, reworked with a new clean copy, I'm guessing, but Mike and Nat are proposing we wait until town meeting, put it before the voters, Doug his reservations. Carl, what's your take? Um, I, my, my concern, big concern that comes up is the, the assessor's safety needs and issues. So um, should we push this till town meeting? What does that mean for them in the meantime? Well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Brian, but they've probably already done their viewing of properties for the year. For this year, yes. Um, yeah. You know, we are, we'll be heading into next year uh, and we're, we're still coming to arrangements about what next year is going to look like for uh, re rolling reappraisal, periodic reappraisal, or, or what that's going to, what form that's going to take. But to address Kyle's concern, would we have enough runway from town meeting to adopt this to have that notification for the assessors when they go out and start doing their uh, uh, viewing? It's, we would miss some people. We would miss anybody who is doing construction uh, between now or whenever we adopt it and when we adopt it after town meeting we would not collect contact information or or any information on anybody who does any projects in between that that period uh, but it's also worth noting that we're not talking about adopting this tonight we're talking about another round of revisions at least one more round of revisions internally um, again my recommendation is that we Anything that carries a, a, a fine, we should have legal review on. Uh, yeah. So we're still talking about a considerable amount of time into the future. Um, that also brings up my other recommendation is that we don't decide right now whether we wait for town meeting or not. We're not done and ready to vote on this. Um, I think when we're ready to vote on it is really when we have to make when we have to make that decision about whether it's going to go to town meeting or whether we're going to adopt it then. Yes, uh, I agree 100% Brian. And I, you know, I, again, I, I, I bring it up for discussion to, to get thoughts from other select board members. I haven't really made my mind up one way or the other on it. I will say, in terms of the assessor's safety that um, it, it's all for naught if uh, the voters strike this down based on, you know, potentially bad information that they have on what it is. Then if, if there's no, if the vo voters strike down the ordinance at, a, at an Australian ballot, um, special, special vote, the ordinance never gets put into place at all. And we never have a shot at, at giving the assessors what they've requested for their per personal safety. So um, it's, it's important that we do it in a way to maximize its success, I think. Again, again, I again that you're very well spoken on that. I appreciate that. Makes me nervous that you're so enthusiastic about my point. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I love you, but when you two agree, that's dangerous. <laughs> well, you know, we all are, we're all pretty close on most everything anyway. So, really, uh, we're all concerned about the best interests of our town and. Uh, and somebody just threw out, and I didn't notice who it was on the chat, but, you know, uh, with all of our revisions and education and everything, uh, town meeting, people are going to be highly educated on this, and so their vote is really going to count. Mm -hmm. So to go into this kind of, you know, half-cocked here uh, and then pass it and then uh, a petition drive go, like Nat's talking about, uh, and maybe misinformation, a vote is taken, and it's the whole thing is struck down during the Australian ballot. So we haven't accomplished the thing for anybody. So 
I really, I would move that we clean this up totally and discuss it next year at town meeting. Well, let's, before you move that, because I, I don't think. Okay, I get it. I get it. You want to clean it all up first. Yeah, yeah. that's not a motion okay. yet. All right. Well, it was, but it wasn't second. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm going to take the whole thing back. I'll, I'll uh, defer to the, the full cleanup, and then we'll go forward there. Yeah, let's not delay on cleaning it up, getting the you know legal review exactly, you know. I mean, in the, we should in the form. we should continue on all, along like we have been looking at this every meeting or so and and making adjustments, and then at some point when we feel it's ready, send it to a legal review, and then we'll decide like Brian was saying at that point whether we wait for town meeting or not, and I think that. Nat brought up a good point. It's best uh, chance of passing would be when you can educate the public and talk directly to them versus just Australian ballot, as well as to address Kyle's concern of safety of the assessors. By the time we get this thing ready to go, it's going to be too late for this year anyway for their uh, uh, getting it in place for the, the assessor. So it would be a next year discussion anyhow when they start doing their viewing in the spring. So I think we could probably wait until town meeting and it would have as much effect as far as addressing their safety concerns. I think that's gonna be likely that we will, I, 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 I don't think that we're going to get, a however fast we act, I don't think we're going to get a lot of mileage out of this in the current year. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be an education process. So there's going to be a lot going on. Uh, well, even if we adopted it tonight, it wouldn't go in effect for, was it 30 or 60 days until the time has elapsed for raising a petition and, you yeah. know, we still haven't even taken it to our attorney yet. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to have to have a couple of public hearings on it before we can adopt it. Yeah, it's going to be a little while. Yeah, okay. So I guess you got your marching orders with some yep. cleanup, and then we'll come back to it again next meeting? Yes, I, I've got a couple of questions from the audience. Okay. We're ready for those. Yep, go ahead. All right, uh, Walter, I've got you up first. Okay, go ahead, Walter. Go ahead, Walter. Yes, thank you. Um, I put my hand up early, but it seems the select board has come around a lot of my points in that make this as simple as possible. Um, and really, this should just be a notification for the assessors and what to do an assessment. I mean, I did a quick markup and I just said, you know, under uh, 4A, I just said within 30 days of the onset of construction, file a report. And let me go back into section six. I, everywhere I just said application, change it to report, file a report, file a report. And like Doug, I agreed, you know, get rid of set, well, FT, and I even got crossed out ED. Um, so I think you've already come where I was wanted to put forward. I just think you just got to change the wording even to some extent, get rid of the words permits and applications and just change it to file a report, file a report, file a report. And that way it's very clear to everybody that there's no approval whatsoever, whatsoever in here. And this is just for information only. Perfect, Walter. Perfect, Walter. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Walter. All right. Uh, I got a couple of comments from chat. Uh, suggestions on name changes. Uh, Lois points out that uh, Section 7D makes a reference to traffic violations. Uh, so that's a good catch that will get come out. Uh, Donna points out that it's going to take time before everybody's aware of this. So that will be a little while. Uh, Jeff Bickford puts his support on uh, time, town meeting, uh, and Shane has the same. Uh, Scott Meyer or Kim Dunkley has, suggests 
uh, basing the fines on taxes missed and uh, possibly a surcharge. I don't think we can do it that way. Th this is a standard format for us for fine leveling levying fines. And I think, you know, we can't go above 500 and we only have so much statutory power. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how that would, how a sliding yeah. scale would work. I don't know if that's a, an option that we have or not. I, I'm, I can look into it a little bit more, but I, I kind of think that that's not a choice. I don't think that option's available to us to choose, but right. I'll, I'll look into it a little more. Okay, I think that covers the, uh, no, Evan Patch has his hand up. Okay. Okay, Evan. Uh, no. Okay, there you go, Evan. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep, go ahead. Um, so this, in essence, is for the assessors, regardless of my feelings on it or not, right? Um, is that to say that they're not covering the portion of the town? I guess my real honest question is informational purposes to make taxes even, whatever. But we're making the assessor's job easier, and I'm wondering what we're getting as taxpayers of this town and the credit. We shouldn't pay them as much. Either that or they're still going to go around to every house. And if that's the case, why are we doing this at all? There's a couple of reasons. They only uh, go to every house, or they go to every a quarter years. of the houses every year. Right. So and every four years, the entire town is covered. Yeah. And so if if you were one of the first houses that uh, they had gone to, they wouldn't be back there for five years. And the, the next year you built a mega barn or mega house, they wouldn't even be aware of it unless through other, some other means. And they do scour our uh, uh, curb cut permits and uh, sewer permits, those sort of things, trying to find where people are doing something and they are not aware of it. Uh, the listers, yes, we used to have listers and they used to go to every single house every single year. But unfortunately, uh, when Rose Warner retired, we could not get anyone. In fact, she was our only lister for a number of years because we were supposed to have three of them and we just couldn't fill the, the vacancies because nobody wanted to serve. Uh, so we had to go to assessors and it's a little bit different with assessors than it was with the listers. And because she's not as familiar with the community as like the listers were, she doesn't always know whose property she's walking onto. They don't know who she is. And there's been times where she's had to walk into a situation that she didn't exactly feel safe because she didn't even know who she was going to see. So the exact answer to my question is it saves us nothing but we have a sheet that she can call people from. Right, exactly. It would not save us any money. It would just give her but, a contact person. But it would show her where to look, even though she has to cover the whole town every four, every four years. Yeah, well, it would uh, tell her that there's somebody out of pre sequence who's building a property, so she's aware of it, she can assess it, and a contact person that she can get a hold of. She would know who the contact person is. Hey, Eric, my, my recollection was the assessor said that, uh, uh, or I understand that whoever is doing this for us were saying they're extremely inefficient here and this would help their efficiency. You know, it was actually going to be, you know, a, a question of expense for us. They don't like doing us because of this problem they're running into that they don't have in other towns. Yeah, you're correct. This was the only town that they support that does not have zoning, so they're not there's a lot more work involved trying to figure out who's built something versus their other towns that they do the work in. Uh, that's accurate. Uh, in our talking with uh, our uh, assessor's contractor, Nemric, um, without this, we would be, uh, it would be a dramatic increase in our cost. Uh, we might still see an increase in our cost, but it would be a a massive increase in order to keep them here. And uh, 
they had expressed reservations about coming back at all uh, if we don't adopt something like this. It would be interesting if we could get that figure from them. I don't know if they... I'm working on getting... Uh, what, what's our quote with it with this ordinance and what's our quote without this ordinance? Yeah, I, I'm working on, on getting that. Uh, yeah, both sides of it and there's only one assessor company in this entire state. Well, well, we'll go back out to bid when we, when that contract comes due. Um, when is that contract up? Do we know? That contract is up now. We're I'm yes, it would be up every year if they're threatening not coming back. That's not how that works. So it's, a, it's a it's a four year process. It's true, Mr. Chairman. The other there are other uh, assessing groups out there that could service the town of Johnson. So it, does take, it does take a company um, some time to become acquainted with the town and their, and their records. And so there, there's an advantage to the, the company that's already doing it. But um, that's there's true. Really, there's really, uh, we, we should do our due diligence and get, and get quotes if we can. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I would point out that uh, the citizens are seen with lacking grievance hearings and the need for a board of civil authorities. The citizens were seem to not be expressing their displeasure in their work. That's a good point. Maybe that means they're too old. And I don't recall, but did we even have any other uh, bids submitted when we put this out for bid the, originally? I wasn't here at that time, so I'm, I'm not sure. I think we did, Eric. We I did? think so, too. Okay. I, think we had I couldn't remember. I know there was a reason we selected this one over all the others. Uh, and maybe it was cost, I don't remember, but uh, just seem to recall there was a, a strong reason why we selected them. I would say that um, this form, an informational form, a rather simple thing would be likely as useful to anyone else that we bring in from the outside as, as the Nimerick people, our assessors are saying it is, is to us. And, and I don't think it's a reason to talk about dumping these people because uh, they're run into a problem that they can easily identify in it to us. And it might be useful to be able to quantify it in terms of dollars about what the problems are. But uh, I don't think it's a reason to jump ship on them. I, I agree, Doug. I, I'm. We, we'll seek additional bids, but, and we'll ask for a little bit more details on what the cost difference is uh, between the two. But. <laughs> I, I I think you're right that anybody coming in is going to need the same, uh, have the same issue. Could be. Is there anyone else out there? Uh, I don't think I've got anybody else. Okay. Did you hear, ever hear back from Paul? I have not yet. Okay. Why don't you uh, give the update on the uh, light industrial park? Okay. I'm bringing this up on my screen here. All right, so with the, the update on the Light Industrial Park, uh, <clears throat> the most recent meeting that Seth and I had with the uh, Economic Development Authority who's providing the, the uh, that's the major federal grant that we're going after, their recommendation to us uh, goes beyond our earlier understanding of that they want us to have not just a willingness to provide cash, but they want us to have cash on hand for the project. Uh, that would require us borrowing quite a bit of money uh, that we don't think we would have to spend most of it, uh, possibly none of it, that we would be working on giving as much of it back through 
in-kind contributions of work and additional grants and financing. But this is, is something that they're looking for and they're asking us to have that money in cash on hand when we make the grant application. They say that, that will make our grant application much more competitive and likely to succeed. I am working with our congressional delegation. Um, Peter Welch's office is very supportive of us pushing back on the EDA with regard to this. Um, but it's something that it, it's, we need to have that discussion uh, about um, what is our appetite for borrowing for this. And, um, and to borrow that kind of money, we're talking about a town-wide vote. And in COVID-19, that means Australian ballot. Yeah, the total project cost is uh, just shy of $1.4 million, uh, which leads leaves our share at $279,000. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. I, I just saw Greg Tatro. I think he wants to lend us some money. <laughs> you want to know how much we need it. Maybe he's going to write us out a check. Yeah, so we need to have $279,009.60 uh, on hand for this grant application. Um, when we're talking to uh, Representative well, Welch's office, um, you know, the, the tack I've taken there is that, you know, in this time of, you know, everything we're dealing with COVID and everything else, uh, communities are very cash poor right now that uh, we don't have money to throw around. Uh, even if we did have an appetite for something this big, we wouldn't have that much cash that we could just set aside. Um, we again feel that we'll be able to get most of it through in-kind contribution and other financing. So we'd like them to be a little bit more flexible when they're looking for their local match. And I've never heard of a grant application that required you to have upfront your match cash on hand. I've never seen that before. When did this requirement come about and why is it coming up now as, as opposed to earlier in the process? My understanding about this change, I may have, I can't entirely say that this is, is that I, uh, not a misunderstanding that I could have had with uh, the representative from the EDA. But my feeling on this is that this is to make us more competitive and not uh, a, a strict requirement. That the advice is not that they would not grant it to us, but that everybody else asking for the same pot of money, um, we would likely get passed over if we didn't have the cash. So this sounds like the poor communities stay poor <laughs> and the rich communities stay rich. Yeah, that's just what I was going to say. This Kyle. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so essentially they're saying if you want to improve your application, you have to have the money. Yes. And, and so they're saying the probability will, you raise the money, your probability increases. You know, it, how, are we, how are we going to fight against that scoring system? I'm trying by organizing uh, our congressional delegation with uh, Peter Welch, uh, Patrick Leahy, and Bernie Sanders of trying to get a letter of support that they're going to write asking uh, the EDA to change their priorities uh, during this time, that they should look at impact more than ability to pay. But up until this point, they were certainly leading us to believe that we were very, very competitive and they liked this project and they wanted it to be successful and they were working with you and Seth to make the most competitive package. And then at the 11th hour, 
they tell us, oh, by the way, you've got to have the cash on hand for the in-kind match or the matching amount. Not you got it. Better if you do. It smells like politics somewhere. You know, usually a grant is when you have need, you don't have enough money to, to get by and you need some help. Uh, it just seems counterproductive that we have to raise all that kind of money just to try to get a grant and we're in a situation where we don't really have the funds. And I mean, it's ironic that during this COVID-19, they of all people should know that we can't have a town-wide meeting. It would have to be by Australian ballot. Um, well, uh, this recommendation is coming, coming from the feds, uh, from the federal government. So I don't think that they do have any particular knowledge of our policies and procedures in Vermont. Oh. Well, you're schooling the congressional delegation, I trust, or the yep. congressional delegation is schooling the feds on this, and hopefully they can uh, beat a little sense into them. What was the timeline on this? It's a rolling deadline. Uh, so it's the clock starts once we make our, our formal submission. Uh, but they've been doing a lot of kind of extracurricular lots or uh, extracurricular work with us to prep this so that when we submit the application, it's virtually guaranteed success. Uh, that's been yeah. kind of the strategy we, we've had with this is, uh, is working on some, on spending a long time working on one application so that when it goes in, that's it, that it goes in, it gets approved and we move rather quickly from there. And they are aware that it, we could lay our hands immediately on a certain portion of that 275,000 in our revolving loan. Right. Yep. I mean, but yeah, they want us to go to a bank and get or bond or something to get the whole thing. Yeah. They, again, they, they have said that the, the most competitive application to submit is one where we have our match ready to pay out. Um, so, I, I want to talk a little bit about alternatives because I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of appetite for borrowing for this. And I didn't expect to see a lot of interest in, in borrowing the money. Um, we have, again, we can submit a, you know, a less competitive application. We can submit with uh, what the money we have. We can spend more time trying to sell, uh, lots and pre-sell uh, opportunities in the uh, in, in the uh, industrial park that we you know with it that having the grant ready to submit and all we need to do is fundraise that might be attractive enough to get a, a developer to come in and, and work with us in a way that they haven't been interested before um, you know, I think that there's more to, I think that we can continue trying to fundraise for this and that we don't necessarily have to uh, borrow the money. But I think it was important to inform the board and inform the public that this is going to, again, take a little bit more time. Um, you know, that we were rolling right along and it looked, things were looking really good. And then we're, we're getting this um, pushback on having more cash. So if we want to move quickly, we can submit a less competitive application uh, or we can hold off and build a stronger case. When they say less competitive, how probable, what are the probabilities they're giving us, you know, for this horse race? How fierce is the competition? I, that is,
that's very difficult for me to say. It's kind of plain telephone a little bit that uh, what the the folks are telling our representative, uh, what his review team and attorneys are telling our representative and he's relaying to us. Um, it, it's hard for it's hard for me to say how competitive that makes us or, or how uncompetitive that makes us. Um, you know, I think it's, I think I'd like to explore that option a little bit more though, that I, I'm interested in, in submitting. Um, you know, that, and seeing where, seeing where we come out and, and at least furthering that discussion of what are the consequences if we're denied this time. Um, you know, how serious is it for us to go back for a second application on the same project? Okay. Uh, Leah has uh, her hand up and probably some very helpful yeah. insight. Um, I came to this late so quickly. Um, Brian, is this an FY19 disaster supplemental or the CARES Act application? Uh, this is FY19. Uh, so this so, was... Actually, sorry, this is... So my understanding... This is the uh, FY 2018 Economic Development Assistance Program. Okay. So if that money is still out there, to me, that's an indication, and I've heard this previously, that this money is, they don't have enough applicants for it. So that's why this money is still available. Uh, if you were telling me it's a CARES Act application, that money is going out very fast. Um, so I think um, it would be worthwhile. Um, and again, I don't have all the background because I haven't been working on this. Uh, but I think it is really worthwhile to submit the application as is, provided it's eligible. Um, or explore their option seriously and do it do it now, I do think that there would be a higher chance for the town with this program since the money is still out there. Hmm. That's an interesting take. And would it make us uh, more competitive having those congressional letters of support? I think that that's lot, that would probably help. Um, Leah, are you back on? We lose her. I think we lost her. I have her. Uh, I don't have her as muted. Um, no, I see her. I see well, you. Well, there she is. I don't have you on mute. I, you should be unmuted. Now she's muted. No. Looks like she's oh, still there. now I'm unmuted. Yeah. No, um, there you so no. yeah, uh, you know, I, I don't really waste your time because I only have partial responses, but I guess you heard what I said. My sense is the money is there now because they don't have enough applicants for it. Um, I understand that there is a baseline recommend, uh, requirement for a match. It usually is with this these EDA funds. Um, I don't understand why there seems like they're all of a sudden. Okay, we lost her again. Yeah. Brian, you can follow up with her. Yeah. I'll, I'll follow up with... Uh, Leia on this that okay uh, and, that and would, yeah be I, I think that there's I'm interested in pursuing this as submitting knowing that we're a little bit less competitive I want to find out a little bit more details about the consequences of getting denied um, and then go back in with um, you know, going going back in with um, how much 
depending on the consequences, we submit based on contributing in-kind work and borrowing from our own revolving loan fund to come up with the cash. Uh, if that fails the application, uh, I'm interested in pursuing other grants and other opportunities before borrowing. That there is some money uh, going around with um, COVID-19, with CARES, with other uh, acts that I'm not sure what can be used to match with something like this, but I'm interested in continuing to look for it. Um, you know, and a little bit farther out into the future, there'll be another round of the Northern Borders Grant. We were denied uh, for this project before, um, actually for similar reasons that we did not have uh, a good path to the rest of the money that we needed. Uh, so they were reluctant to loan us money without, they were concerned that we would, about us coming up with the rest of the money. Um, so they didn't think we were a good risk. <laughs> We probably don't have, how much money do we have in our revolving loan fund? It's nowhere near 280,000. No, no, it's not. But if we're submitting, uh, the estimate has changed a little bit uh, since we did the work, we did a workup on financing this with in-kind contributions. And at that time, I believe we came up $75,000 short so that we were only gonna need uh, cash contribution of $75,000 to complete the project. Um, and that was a fairly conservative estimate on our in-kind contribution. Um, that has changed a little bit. Our estimate has changed a little bit. Um, so I'll have to run through it again, but I'm thinking that uh, you know, probably seventy-five dollars to $100,000 is what we'll need to raise. A lot of that can come from our revolving loan fund, uh, if not all of it. Are you still partnering with, with Seth on this at LCPC? Yes, Seth has been invaluable for this. Uh, Seth has been extremely helpful. Uh, we're also getting an economic impact study uh, completed by the state's uh, modeling team uh, for this. So we'll, we'll be able to more completely say uh, what the expected activity generated by the park will be so that we can make some good estimates on you know how much money will this bring in if we're successful uh, with using their modeling tools so we'll, we'll be a lot more exact than uh, the estimates that myself and uh, John Mandeville were developed. That's awesome. That's really good. Okay, well, so I guess you got a couple of things to follow up on. Yep. No, I, I, I we we got a lot of feedback, but people wanting more information about it, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll uh, keep it as a regular item on here for a while. Yep. Um, Next item questions just... from chat. If we're okay. ready for that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's see, Greg had a couple of questions. Uh, Greg, would you mind if I just unmute you so we can, uh, you, had, you had a few questions there. Okay, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I was just wondering about <clears throat> if we could pre-sell some lots to raise the money, um, which most of your bigger projects around uh, any state or country do, they'll um, come up with a design and then get people to uh, buy them and then uh, use a down payment as a match for your funding. And that happens, well, all the time, basically. Um, the one thing about that, if you did that, you'd have to be totally committed and have a time line or a time uh, frame that you would be starting construction. Now that doesn't have to be exact, but it's got to be somewhere in here. That would be one option, I would think. And um, do we have a uh, design of of the lots and uh, the uh, how you're going to subdivide this piece of property? We do. Oh, that's so. You have lots already subdivided or on a map? 
Uh, we have a map for it. We haven't actually subdivided them. Um, when we've tried this kind of tactic in the past, uh, the real estate agents or the, the developers that we had talked to uh, were not interested in partnering at that time. They wanted us to be further along in the process. Uh, but right. we're a little bit farther along, so we can try and take those meetings again and uh, demonstrate that you know we're farther along, we're closer to funding. Uh, the complete project, what we need right now is a little bit of money in advance to us. So if they can assist us with selling some of the lots, we'll be able to complete the project. Well, that makes sense to me. I mean, that's typically how these developers fund their projects. Yeah. At least the ones I've been involved in anyway. So I guess that's a good thought, but maybe uh, if you could have some kind of a quick uh, subdivision plot on this map you have, which you should be able to do fairly reasonable, then you, then you could, you know, have, how many lots do you think you're going to get out of this property? Uh, we've got, I think it's six lots targeted. Six. So it's pretty large lots. Yeah. Does the math work? I mean, if you sell six lots for what do you figure they're going to be worth? I mean, that's something you can do whenever it's an off the wall question. Yeah. You know, I, Greg, well, I, we I can't, re I can't talk remember about the figure in more detail. Uh, I would appreciate your your advice and your practice on having done this, uh, but. I, I don't have that information in front of me. I have some people I work with that could help us quite a bit here. I'm sure they donate a little time. So just let me know and uh, be happy to be happy to help. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. Thank you guys. That's it for me. I'm good. Okay. You can mail me again. All right. <laughs> All right. Was there anyone else? Uh, Jeff, or Jess, by way of Jeff Bickford, uh, asked about, can we resubmit the grant? And I think we kind of answered that, that we're going to find out a little bit more about what the process is for resubmitting. Uh, that that, from what I have been learning with uh, my contact at EDA, that doesn't seem to be the way that they uh, necessarily like to go, that they've really been working with us on trying to make, trying to do all this in advance of submitting the grant. Uh, that they want us, they've read the application, you know, they've read our complete application package, you know, probably a dozen times uh, where we haven't actually submitted it yet, but we've gone through start to finish little tweaks, every little thing that they want to see, all the improvements that we can make. Um, quite a few times. So it, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I'm going to find out a little bit more about the consequences of getting denied uh, for an application. Um, because like Leah said, this is an older pot of money. Uh, it's been around for a while. This relates back to our ice jam. Um, you know, the, the, they might need applications. Uh, they might need applicants badly enough that us having a slightly less competitive application, uh, us getting support from our congressional representatives, and uh, our our local local representatives are. Uh, we've got support from our SEDS group, uh, which is I don't know what the SEDS group stands for, but the CEDS. Uh, We've got a lot of support for this and a lot of letters of support. Um, okay. So. Any further We're comments or questions? Even, even if this might not be the perfect application. I don't see anybody else from the public. Okay. Your next item was just an FYI. The sheriff's monthly report. Yes, you received the sheriff's update by email. Okay. 
Then what I show looping back around is Mike with a Juneteenth uh, proposal. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, as you recall, last meeting uh, at the 11th hour, kind of this proposal uh, declaring June 19th, Juneteenth Freedom Day in the town of Johnson was kind of given to us at the 11th hour. Uh, so it was decided to uh, kind of table that discussion uh, until this meeting or the next meeting. And so I would like to move it forward tonight, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to move the proclamation declaring June 19th, Juneteenth Freedom Day in the town of Johnson, Vermont. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Go ahead. I would like to uh, have the discussion by the select board reading this proclamation. And uh, I have broken it down uh, into uh, five major groups. Uh, basically, the first three whereases uh, would be divvied up uh, according to board seniority, which would be the, the chairman, uh, Doug, uh, Nat, uh, the following two whereases would be to Kyle and the, the last two uh, where uh, the last whereas to be uh, for me. So I would like to see the, the board read this out loud and, and kind of that be our discussion. If I may is sort all, of move, Mr. Chairman. Is all board members in uh, agreement to do that? Um, yeah, I, I'm fully supportive of um, declaring uh, a Juneteenth proclamation. Um, I do have a couple of questions about this particular one and some of the, well, in particular, is this the time, Mike, for me to ask the question or do you want to read it first? Well, we could read it first. Um, and I think that that would, uh, we would read it and then the discussion would come after. Uh, wouldn't you think that would work the best? Whatever, either way is fine. Okay. So are all board members willing to read a section as Mike pointed out? Yeah, as long as we know, you know, that there's plenty of time for further discussion. Mm -hmm. It would be terrible to read this and then not adopt it. <laughs> Because it's quite a bit of reading. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, I think that we ought to put our hearts and souls into it. But, uh, you know, it's a, at the end it says, now therefore be it resolved. And so that is kind of the motion. That's correct. So I'll back up, Mr. Chairman, and, uh, and let uh, the discussion about this document move forward. And if uh, revisions want to be made or it be left the way it is, we can move forward from there. Okay, then I'll open it up for board members for discussion. So, Brian, could you scroll back up, please? Yes. For the first paragraph. Um, the, the first thing that, just in the first sentence, um, talks about the emancipation of slaves, including Black, Indigenous, and other communities of color through the Confederate South. Um, and I, um, it's the first time I've seen Indigenous um, re in relation to, to Juneteenth uh, for celebrating Indigenous populations, um, but I, I, it might be a gap in my education. That's great because then I'll get to learn what's the relationship of Indigenous people to Juneteenth. So, and that's the first sentence. So we just got this at three o'clock. So um, just to pick through all of the, all of the facts, um, I haven't had a chance to do that, to see that all of this makes sense. Um, I have seen that there are a lot of different Juneteenth resolutions um, done by different municipalities and, and state governments that are, that are really good. One that's been brought to my attention is one from the town of Amherst. Um, so uh, I'm not really crazy about wordsmithing this whole thing because it, that would be really timely, but uh, take a lot of time. But uh, 
that's my general, my, those are my general concerns. And again, I, I am really strongly in favor of us um, passing a resolution of this nature. Mr. Chairman, we haven't had this since three o'clock. We've had this for two weeks. Yeah, so noted. I, you know, I didn't, it, it, it came into my email box at three o'clock this afternoon saying this was going to be added to the agenda. I know, but it was this, it was in our packet last uh, meeting that, and it was kind of left that we were supposed to uh, study it and talk to it at a, at a further meeting. Uh, so it's not like it, it was just given to us at three o'clock. Was it in our packet last meeting? Yes, it was. Well, it, it was not in the packet, but it did come up during the meeting for discussion. Okay, I, I, st I stand corrected. And no, no, it, it, uh, an attachment was never sent to me that, that so I'm happy to kick it around. I'm just saying we, I've had this since three o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I, I go ahead, Kyle. Sorry, Nat, were you finished? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree that I would, um, I really want us to adopt a proclamation as well um and i've um been looking at this one more and and also looking at others and thinking that while this has some really uh you know some very good things in it um i think that there could be more um and i think that we should um also open it up to the audience to to tell us what they think. Um, yeah, I will yeah. after I want to give the board members first. Uh, so anyway, practice. I agree that we need to, that um, that I would also like to to not reinvent the wheel, but to to um, I guess also hear from Shane where exactly this one came from and why he picked and choose what chose what he did and what why he left out other things that he did. Great um, question. Yeah, great question. So, mm -hmm. we can start there, I guess. So, am I hearing correctly that there are different proclamations out there for the same day? There are a bazillion yes. of them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is Shane on? Yes, or any, okay, any further board members that want to talk to this? And then maybe Shane would address Kyle's questions. If not, if Shane's available and wants to speak. Okay, Shane, uh, I've got you unmuted. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so um, I took this pretty much verbatim from the town of Hartford's and replaced the word Hartford with Johnson and replaced their names with your names. Um, so the language in here uh, was the language passed by the town of Hartford at their June 9th meeting. Um, and, you know, like I said, just shifted over to, uh, the town of Johnson. I didn't add anything or take anything away because I figured this is something that did pass another elected body in the state and whether or not, you know, it's totally the same. I thought it might be a good uh, model. And I also thought that if we tried to add too much to something like this, that, that uh, to me kind of seems like a, a, you know, straight shooting, no brainer kind of thing. Um, that you would end up maybe losing a little bit of that uh, universality. And you know, if you, if you add some things, then maybe those new things aren't things that everyone can be on board with. So that was my thinking in, in just changing it over to be a Johnson version. If there are other versions out there, like I'm, I'm looking up Amherst's right now, you know, it's, it's uh, totally fine if we wanna, wanna modify it. Uh, the other thing that I was gonna say uh, in regards to uh, indigenous people and, and, you know, um, they're the emancipation proclamation freed all slaves in the South, not just black slaves. And so, uh, you know, technically this isn't even a fully inclusive list. I figured using the, 
uh, you know, the specific terminology of black indigenous and communities of color that was again used in the Hartford uh, resolution. I figured that would, would be inclusive enough. Okay, I, to that, to, thanks Shane. Um, there's, my understanding is Juneteenth is really a holiday that has to do with the Afri African American experience um, and that the Indian American experience, the indigenous experience, um, even enslaved uh, in, the, in the Confederacy was quite a bit different than it was for, for African Americans. Um, might be, I might be picking nits there, but I, I've never understood this to be an indigenous uh, event. It, it may not be, and, and ultimately it's, you know, the pleasure of the board to do with what they, what they like. Um, I, you know, tried to keep it simple in my, in my drafting of it. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I'm Go ahead, I was just gonna, I was just reading the bottom of it. One of the whereas is uh, Vermont has already declared this a state holiday, and um, do they have something different than this for the state? I'm actually not sure. Um, I can try to go back and see what that language was in 2008. Um, but yeah, uh, that was not a piece of research that I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, looks like we've got a question from, uh, Beth Foy, if we're ready for okay. another. Yeah, why don't you open up to the public? Okay. All right, Beth, go ahead. I don't have a question as much as a statement. I think that um, it's really important that whatever the message is from the board is very clear and is simple and is not wordy. I mean, if you want to adopt something, um, I'm all for it. I actually fully support it and think we think the town of Johnson should. Um, but I also think it should be um, the wording of it should be selected carefully um, and having one to three sentences is sufficient to make the point heard and actually speaks louder than having a lot of words on a page. Um, I think it will get more attention if you have one to three sentences at most. Um, and then I think it is really important to understand the intent of Juneteenth. It's well documented. Um, and there's a lot of um, ways to research. So I would just advise the board to um, please do your homework before uh, voting on this. Uh, I do support, again, you know, um, having a statement around it, uh, but I do just want to caution that too many words can get you in trouble and too few words don't say the right thing. So um, there are ways to make your point and be, um, you know, pointed about the, your point that you're trying to make. So thanks. Thank you, Beth. Is there anyone else, Brian? I don't see anyone else. Okay. I think Jackie has her hand raised. No. Sorry, when, when I'm sharing my screen, I don't see the uh, actual videos as well. Uh, so my apologies, Jackie. I've, uh, let's see. I'm trying to unmute you. Still trying. Okay, there you go, Jackie. There you go. Sorry about that. Thank you, Brian. Um, I'm so glad that we're talking about this right now. Um, you know, here we are in, in, in 2020 in, in Johnson, Vermont, having this discussion. And, um, you know, we're having this discussion for a reason. 
this this didn't just fall out of the sky. That, that's why a lot of people are, are having um, these discussions and, and trying to come up with resolutions like this. I think um, I think context is really important. The historical context that has brought us to this very moment in time where here in Johnson we're discussing this. I don't agree um, with the the uh, about having it simple and short and all that kind of stuff. I think context uh, re really matters. If we if we adopt as a town a resolution for this, we, we need to we need to say why we're doing it. And I, I would hate to think that in the in the future um, that our kids or grandkids would would look back at, at our resolution, uh, you know, and, and juxtaposed with what's going on right now, and and think that we somehow watered it down or whitewashed it to be careful or to be cautious. Um, careful or cautious for whom, you know. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if you saw the, um, you know, the House of Representatives for the state of Vermont did a big long one and, um, and it passed, you know, I don't know, 120 something to 17. Uh, both of our representatives, Matt Hill and Dan Noyes voted for it. And, um, and it really went over the historical context that brought us to this moment in great detail. And it, it was painful, some of it, painful, um, upsetting. But again, I, I don't caution to to turn away from that and and sort of whitewash this into like happy holiday. Um, so 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 that's what I want to say. Thanks. Thank you. Do we have anyone else, Brian? Yes, uh, Lois. Uh, I'm trying to unmute you, Lois. Give me just a second. It's not very cooperative tonight. Okay, go ahead, Lois. I think actually I had to push a button in order to get unmuted. I didn't realize that. Um, I su certainly su support um, the, the um, statement but I just want to note that we talk throughout it as being a, um, a recognition day, a freedom day. But when we get down to the fourth paragraph, we talk, it mentions it being an official holiday. And I think that we want to make sure as a town that we have clarification as to what we are looking for. I believe the state is the recognition day. I didn't see any official state holiday. But I uh, just don't want that to slip through the cracks because they mean two different things. That's all I have. Thank you, Lois. Do we have anyone else? You're going to go back to the board, are you, eventually? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing anybody else. Okay, then I guess we'll loop it back around to the board. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, kind of the last two uh, big paragraphs kind of sum it up. Uh, whereas we recognize that presently, 155 years after the last enslaved peoples in the United States of America were freed from the shackles of bondage, peoples of color continue to struggle and overcome racism and bigotry. And whereas the town of Johnson, Vermont, wishes to show solidarity and stand with our black, indigenous, and communities of color by adopting Juneteenth as an official holiday and, and then we could go on and read uh, during the legislative session, the 29th state, and then go down through to therefore be it resolved uh, that the town of Johnson select board members, all of us here, uh, proclaim June 19th and every uh, June 19th thereafter is Juneteenth Freedom Day in the town of Johnson to be celebrated. So, I mean, it, would, would that be too succinct? Or would that be too, too brief? Or would that kind of cover it all? Uh, 
Can I, um, can I speak? This is Kyle. Go ahead, Kyle. Okay, thanks. Um, so, so something that actually Jackie said just triggered my memory back to when Boar um, Yang was on our last community Zoom meeting and she kind of told us the cautionary tale that really uh, rang true with me just having seen my own children come home from school saying um, these very things. But when she was talking about how we often, you know, um, our, we were taught and our children are now being taught, you know, uh, uh, you know, they celebrate Martin Luther King Day very, very uh, superficially at school. Um, and then, but they learn, you know, so we, we celebrate these holidays, but in, in, a, in a historical context, which is very important, but then the missing part, and which I think is a real disservice to all of us, I, you know, in terms of just trying to combat the systemic racism is remembering that this is still happening now, today, as we speak, as we're having this discussion. And to leave the current climate, mm -hmm. the current context of, of, of what everyday systemic racism feels, looks like, and is, you know, for a person of color out of our out of this proclamation, I think is, is would be an incredibly missed opportunity and a and a um, you know that that's not helping. It's not helping our people of color <laughs> by not talking about what's going on now. Um, so if we are really committed to to adopting a proclamation that um, that <coughs> celebrates emancipation and freedom, I think we really need to acknowledge our, the history, the painful history, but we also need to acknowledge what is happening today and also own and acknowledge that there is work for us, <laughs> white folks, to continue to do to, to combat it and um, to, to um, break down the, the system. So I, I um, Sorry, that just that just uh, popped into my head when um, when there was talk about a happy holiday. Um, yeah, we have to stop these happy holidays. We need to really um, get serious about um, about taking ownership and and moving things forward in a in a really um, in a really meaningful way. So, my feeling right here on the spot is that we should, um, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to, to, to wordsmith this whole thing ourselves, but why not adopt something, you know, the, the, the state rep um, resolution that passed overwhelmingly in the, in the state house that both our reps just passed. I would be very, open to looking at that and um, and going with that resolution because it really I'm, I'm looking at it quickly but it, it really um, it really speaks to the now which I think is so so important I agree Which Anyone this one Shane does not talk right about it. There's like one little sentence about that at the very end, but it really doesn't speak to the now, which I think is really important in that Boer told you know has told us a few times now. That's really important. Question for Kyle. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. You're talking about uh, it, it does discuss it. It said freed from the shackles of bondage. People of color continue to struggle and overcome racism and bigotry. I mean, that's addressed. Is that is that the uh, kind of the cursory sentence you're talking about? Yeah, I think that that barely touches touches it. <laughs> um, if well, you read the one that the um, that the that the state reps passed, I mean, they really they really um, they 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 nail it. <laughs> they mm -hmm. they talk directly to it. Mm -hmm. um, that I think we've been doing such a disservice to our to ourselves and our children and generations to come if we don't if we don't name it specifically unapolog unapologetically. Another question for you, Kyle. Yeah. Uh, you were you were going to move forward with this last meeting, 
uh, as written, uh, as I recall. Uh, mm -hmm. But there was some uh, pushback on it because some people hadn't seen it. Uh, so it must be you had a change of heart uh, from two weeks ago concerning this particular proclamation. Uh, yeah, we, I, I've, I've, um, I have been thinking about it a little more and I've been thinking, uh, you know, I'm hearing public, I'm hearing different comments and it's, it's, I'm, I'm yeah, this is a process, a learning process for me too. <laughs> so I think it's important that we continue to challenge ourselves and learn and adapt. So I, I am having a, a, a change of heart, not in, the, not in that we should adopt something, but I think it needs to be a, the right thing that actually does, moves the conversation, that, that, um, that moves us to action. Um, Do you not think that the legislator, uh, legislature, uh, in their adoption of that uh, quite long uh, uh, proclamation, don't you think that suffices, or are you saying that Johnson has to craft their own? No, I think that the, the state rep version, and I can put the link in the chat here, um, is great. I think that that really, really uh, speaks to what I think is very important. So you're, you're basically saying that we should uh, check that out and, uh, and discuss it again at another time? Yes. Yep. If, yeah, if folks haven't had, uh, it sounds like most haven't had a chance to look at it, so. Um, most people haven't had a chance to look at what we have before us this evening? No, the one that I'm proposing. Okay. Yeah. I withdraw my motion, Mr. Chairman. So noted, uh, who was the second? I don't think I got one. There was no second? Okay. Then the motion died for lack of a second. Well, I just withdrew it, so it didn't have a chance to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hanging out there so long it's dead. <laughs> I was trying to remember if I seconded it or not. I, Doug seconded it because we could not have the discussion unless yeah, it was seconded. Did, Doug thought, seconded it. So I let thought. Doug take it back. I, I'm okay. 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 So I take it. He, we both take it back. My mistake. Okay. I, said, I thought I did. You, know? <laughs> you did because we couldn't have discussed it had you not seconded it or somebody. Well, we'll find out when we see the minutes. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Uh, Shane has his hand up. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Shane. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a, a moot point now. I just, I'll, I'll say I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. Um, I thought it was a kind of a, a slam dunk, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, the, the, the change of heart is a little bit disappointing. Um, I, I would say that I think that this, in addition to the resolution that was passed at the previous meeting by the board, would certainly go a long way towards establishing any sort of context that needed to be established. Uh, but with that, uh, you know, thanks for the time. Thank you. Is there anyone else, Brian? Uh, we've had a couple comments in chat. Uh, Diana Osborne has encouraged us to make a commitment to uh, some actions, goals, uh, to kind of continue our efforts. Uh, I think broadly, Diana, you're talking about our efforts for anti-racism. Um, Beth Foy wants to clarify that the one that we're proposing people review uh, for the uh, the next meeting is the one passed by the state. Uh, is that correct? Uh, that's, that's only two weeks away, right? Yeah. 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 So that, that's the one that we're going to ha all have read and have available. And I'll, I'll 
I'll get a link and send that out to the board and the board copy list. Uh, okay. And then Scott had the suggestion that, you know, since we've already passed the 19th uh, of this year that we have time so to make sure that we're adopting, you know, kind of just, it says just what we wanted to say, uh, that we should, we should be careful and considerate with what we adopt because we've now got time. Okay. And can I just say, Shane, I'm sorry you're feeling disappointed. I don't think you should. I think you should feel really good because you started this conversation, a really important conversation, and we're just continuing it and making sure that it, um, it, it says what we all feel like it should say, which um, I, I think it's going to happen. It's just a matter of, of you know, figuring out which which version resonates with with uh, the board and the community. So I think so. This is I don't think that anyway. <laughs> just saying that you shouldn't feel disappointed. I think I understand why he would. He put forward something that he thought was, was uh, a slam dunk and acceptable and it hasn't worked out that way. So I can understand why he's disappointed. I also understand what you're saying about the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, unless there's anybody further out there for comments? move on beautification okay so beautification committee has uh, sought some proposals from uh, Andrea Blaisdell uh, for work around the municipal office uh, so this wouldn't be this would be a continuation of the work that she's done on uh, the village green, uh, but the beautification committee uh, has had a little bit of trouble meeting lately. And uh, as a town entity, the kind of like the, the select board to sign for them, uh, the contract to work with Andrea. So I'm going to Bring that up here. So these are four projects all at the municipal building. Uh, the first one is the Pedro near the driveway, uh, which would be uh, an improvement over uh, kind of what's the, the lack of anything there right now. Uh, the next section, improvements around the flagpole. Improvements around the generator and the town sign. And uh, improvements around our patio. So all together, Kyle, do you remember the total price offhand? Oh, it's in... Oh, shoot. Um, I don't so, offhand. I'm sorry. That's all right. This but, is 13, 14, uh, 27. Yeah. About $3,100 roughly. Yeah, that sounds right. So a little bit more of the backstory is that the beautification committee, you know, we appointed just about an entirely new board right when COVID hit. <laughs> So we were not able to actually get together physically as a group before COVID. And then it's been just really challenging getting these new members and everybody to, to um, get on a Zoom call all at the same time. So we haven't been able to have a Zoom call with a forum to pass these um, proposals, but I do have consent, you know, uh, everyone has said yes to them 
via email. I just haven't been able to get everybody together in one Zoom meeting. Um, so, the, so the Beautification Committee would like to move forward with these proposals with the Select Board's blessing. Okay, and what is our budgeted line item there? This, this little north of 3,000. Uh, this would be paid for uh, partly out of money that was unspent in FY 2019 and FY 2020. Um, okay. So we got plenty of money? Th they can, yes, they can afford it. Okay. Not, you know, this is a substantial amount of their uh, available funds, but. But this is the big, this would be the big project for the, for the year. Yeah, okay. th this is supposed to be most of their funds uh, in their planning. Okay. What's board's pleasure? Is the village ponying up any into this? Yes. Yes, they passed um, at their village meeting, they passed, uh, it was $2,000. Great. A nice. year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so this is to really just to continue the work that she's done on the village green to make it look more like a cozy village green rather than a parking lot with a swath of grass through the middle. Um, and it's also to really start to clean up and beautify our municipal building, which is often one of the first things that, you know, um, new residency, potential homeowner see, tourist see. So the board feels it's really important to, to start, um, yeah, start uh, beautifying our town buildings. If this is thirty-one hundred and some dollars, are we paying half of that, or what? What sort of emotion are you looking for? Good question, Doug. Brian, is that are we to pay for half this, or is it uh, is this Johnson the town share? I'd have to look at exactly how the village had has worded their contribution, but I think that if you authorized the beautification committee to enter into these contracts, then the beautification committee can assign their funds uh, and split it themselves or whatever an appropriate share is. If we're if we've contributed 3000 to beautification and, and the village is committed 2000. Okay. I would so move. We have motion, do we have second? Lack in a second, the motion dies. Oh. I'll second it. Okay, we got a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank Go you. Go forth. Thank you. Make it look pretty. Yep. <laughs> Do we have anything else for that's all I show for the agenda for tonight. Is there anybody has anything else they wanted to bring up? Otherwise. How about Paul and Warden? Oh, yeah. um, we have a phone call tomorrow morning with Paul. He had a few more questions. Okay. All right. I think and Shane Spence Shane was... has also expressed an interest and uh, Shane, I don't think I have your phone number, but I'd like to get in. I'd like to, to talk to you tomorrow also. Uh, so I'll shoot you an email and, and we'll set up a phone call. Um, okay. Looks like Evan Pash has raised his hand. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to unmute you, Evan. Okay, go ahead. Do we have any update on the new window in the town clerk's office and when that will be open to the public? Brian, you had that update today. Yeah. Uh, so Was that just early in the meeting? I, I just sprinted right in here and joined, so I missed it. Oh, nobody happening. discussed it, Shane. Right, no, we, we hadn't gotten through that yet. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to be putting out a public information notice about it, but 
the town clerk's office is going to remain closed for the time being uh, and open by appointment only. But any resident can do an appointment or is that just uh, like, you know, deed searches and stuff on Wednesdays? It's mostly for deed searches and things, but if you've got other needs that, uh, you know, contact myself or Rosemary if you've got a need that you can't service on the website or the Dropbox, and, and we'll make arrangements for you. Okay. Uh, we're, we're certainly not trying to keep anybody shut out. Uh, the regular needs that you can't service are people who need to search the vault for records. Uh, but if you've got something else, get a hold of us and we'll find a way to accommodate you. Okay. Thank you. Ryan, you want to get rid of that uh, statement, please? What statement? The statement that's on the screen. Oh. Thank you. Apologies. Did, the, did you ever see uh, the contracts? for Andrea Blaisdell or did that not show up at all? Oh yeah, yeah, we saw it all. Okay. Is there anyone else? You wanna leave that appointment up in the air tonight, Mr. Chairman? The, the uh, Paul? Yes. Well, what's the board's pleasure? We could uh, make fill it contingent upon his uh, willingness to serve and lacking that, we have Shane who is willing to fill that. He's, he's willing to serve it right to serve right now, right? If uh, Paul doesn't want it, yes, I think that's what he said. Am I, I correct? I, Doug, go ahead. Well, I don't know exactly what to say. It, it's um, there. I, I don't know. I would tend to defer. I don't, I, I'd be interested in what Brian thinks. I, I'm interested in having a conversation with both Shane and Paul, and then coming back to the board with a recommendation that I imagine between the three of us will determine who's got the greatest interest and uh, what they're ready to contribute. Well, technically, that's two weeks, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's only an alternate. Uh, either or both True. can attend the formation meeting. I mean, they can both go to the first formation meeting if, if they want to. Uh, that was part of my desire of appointing our voting delegate right away was that we're set. You know, we're okay. okay whatever else happens with uh, whoever the other alternate is. But didn't Leia want everything all kind of tidy? I, I think Leia would be happy if we had others, or if we made the, the decision, but we are, we've we made what what we were, were set for what we need to have. Okay. Uh, it might be nice if we had another person, but it's not necessary. I can, we've got our voting delegate named. I can address that in part, the, you know, um, we would have a voting delegate if, if she's not able to attend i intend to attend i think that we should have the benefit of alternates is is that uh, we only will have you know six seven towns and therefore that many voting representatives but there's going to be a need for more person power there and more more input so the alternates really ought to be attending so what we'll be missing is the uh the 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 total it would be greater input however however what the input is going to come mostly later because this is going to be pretty much cut and dried formation stuff in the and the legwork and research is going to go later you know before the 15th we'll be needing to meet in order to be in existence and start making applications for grants such as there's eight hundred thousand dollars available for PUDs. So. For the next step is kind of a rote step. It's formation of the organization, just like ours was voting to go into the CUD. I'd rather go with a sure thing. We have Shane Spence wants to do it tonight, and I would move we go with him. 
And then I, it would be over with. I, I would almost uh, declare the, the motion uh, not valid because we're not in any action item right now. We've gone through our whole agenda. Um, it was a pre-warned item, so I, I guess it could go either way. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned we'd go back to this, we'd revisit this. Yeah, and, and what we when we did uh, the indication was he Paul wants to talk to Brian. Shane is going to talk to Brian. The three of them are going to select all these. This is is an alternate position. It is as long as Charlotte's there. The vote is hers, and we still got Doug as an alternate. So, yeah, let's just keep it at that. I mean, waiting two weeks, I don't think it'll be that big an impact. Okay. As long as everybody doesn't have a problem, I don't have it either. I, I think it's two, two great uh, alternates we would have either way. I think I uh, appreciate Shane stepping up, and I think Paul would be great as well. So, let's see what happens in two weeks. I, I want to clear up a, a point uh, in chat that we, we have named our, our voting delegate already that we we are we can wait to name a we named our voting delegate and one alternate yeah. we have one more alternate position that we uh, had planned on that we can name uh, at a future date we're, we're not uh, understaffed or undermanned at this point Any other further, any further comments? Any others? Brian, you see any? Uh, question that the CUD was passed. Uh, I'm, yeah, the, our resolution for the CUD and naming the two delegates was passed. Uh, Donna, correct me if I'm remembering that wrong. Uh, I'll look to her for uh, kind of confirmation that we did everything right. I certainly believe we did because I wrote that it down. That was our intention. I, I believe that was how we did it. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, Donna confirmed in, in chat that we. Okay. Thank you, Donna. No, and thank you for keeping us, uh, making sure that we did pass it correctly. So, uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Lacking anything else? Show us adjourned at 9.37. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, everybody.